Amanda. I'm Ben. We are the safe welcome to our Today we're watching Oshinoko season two, episode ten. There's I'd like to think sometimes I can predict certain things or theorize th certain things in anime that might come to fruition someday. I would have never thought that Himikawa would be Aqua's half-brother, ever, in a I, million years. I don't think I would have ever gone to the direction of, of sibling. I mean, this whole time, our chase has been after father, not siblings. I love this show this so much. This is crazy. You ready? Yeah. Sweet. Order contacts. I've never, never worn contacts before, but I need them. And it relates to Himikawa. He doesn't want to wear contacts. I know. That's what made me think about it. I, I was like, Himikawa, contacts. Also, Oshinoko and eyes are basically synonymous. Fair enough. His first sleepover with his big brother. <laughs> to somebody who doesn't know Aqua's position and why he's doing what he's doing, it's crazy that he would get a DNA test. Yeah. <gasps> He gets to share the name. He still has the name. <gasps> but did we ever DN? No. I don't believe no, it. I don't believe it because we never DNA tested that that was really Himikawa's father. I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe it. あの、ボイヴェ。自分に才能がないコンプレックスを誤魔化そうとしてたのかもな。<laughs> I think Himikawa is, of course, being genuine. I just. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how happy I, Himikawa is! <laughs> I don't think that's really either of their dads. It's Ruby's half brother, too. Why? <laughs> Two. Here's the thing, though. What would give Aqua the idea that his dad isn't actually dead? It looks like Kana has a setup for voice acting work at her PC. You gotta pick one. Aww. Oh, don't drink even if adults ask you to. <laughs> He's like, Himikawa might have a point. <laughs> I'm doing no such thing. Is it alright? Man. Wow. Oh, 
I hope I'm wrong. You I can't just real. liberate him and then send him back down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Legitimately. YouTube にはまあ、現状はそう。当面ビーコマチ <laughs> そこで今日はルームツアーどうかルームツアーどうかよくあるやつだ。絶対嫌。自分の部屋をさらすとかどういう趣味してんの生活の切り売り始めたら終わりよ。え、やろうよ。ルームツアーどうか当たれた。出した
業界歴長い人ほど締め切り守らないよね向こうも忙しいでしょうから仕方ないけれどだからもうちょっと待ってて<笑>やだ催促しよう<笑><笑>そうは言っても一応メールはしてるから<笑>やだ今すぐ電話して<笑>でも、ね、やだやだやだやだやだやだアイドルがアイドルでいられる時間は長くないのんびりしてたらあっという間にタイムアウト来ればいずれ役者の道に戻っちゃうかもしれないメムチョも時期が来ればみそじに<笑>まだ5年5年もいよいよあるから大人の時間で考えないで私たちは今を走ってるゆっくりしてる暇はない Honestly The star disappears from Aqua's eye and it's ever present and strong in rubies ちょっと詰まっていましたよ。やったー。楽曲ですか。ああ、ちょっと詰まっていましたよ。さて、やるかな。テクセで詰まんない曲作りやがって。そう。できてないって。ええ。大御所病かもね。He just said he was using muscle memory. He's already poured out all he Oh my god. <laughs> this man's motivation. You've brought Come life on, back into his life. <laughs> Come on, Ruby. <laughs> Spread the color, Ruby. Saturate him. <laughs> Look at the world you're opening up for this man. <laughs> That's so dramatic, I love it. <laughs> I love that. Ruby knew it too. Seeing yep. the face of the person they'll give the work to, who they are creating for. I love that. 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 ミヤザキか。わあ。おお。そういえば、あれ以来一度も行ったことなかったな。そうだな。行くか。That's so I thought it was gonna like pan down to Aqua's old bone corpse that has never been found, but that is the complete opposite of what just happened. No, that, that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was his corpse. Okay, that was Oshinoko, season two, episode 10. Already, it's been like 10 seconds since the episode ended and Anna and I are like, nope, doesn't work. The math doesn't math. The it doesn't math work. doesn't <laughs> like, math. Let's break I, it down. I don't. For a I didn't narratively for a second believe it, but I love that they give us enough clues, I think, to deduce that it is not his father, mm -hmm. uh, Uehara. He, uh, Himika uh, Himikawa was 20. At the time that this death happened feasibly as Aqua believes it, it would be possible, right? Yeah, sure. But we see I on the phone with the father mm -hmm. when they're like three or four. Yep. 
it wouldn't add up. He would have been dead. Yep. Which it also means that Himikawa doesn't know who his actual father is. This is just the man that his birth mother married. Correct. Therefore, he's assuming that this is the only man that she slept with. And since that, in my mind, is at least 90% like fact, can't like mm -hmm. that's what's going to be happening going forward, I in instantly jump to what's going to be the piece of information or realization that Aqua gets to remind him of that. What is going to force him to start thinking about it again? Yeah. Um, I would, I just want to, before we leave the idea of like how we felt upon hearing this within the episode, I was immediately not believing it. Yeah. Purely because of the idea that we already have DNA testing introduced in the show as an idea of like, that is confirmation that is like scientific confirmation that you are related to someone and as soon as knowing that that's been introduced and actual testing to know for sure that Himikawa is a half sibling I it it was like well how's Aqua gonna drop this if he can't you know yeah get a hundred percent confirmation that he, but he's not gonna tell Himikawa I don't believe that that was your actual birth dad because why wouldn't he believe it if, if that is the parents that they were married and they, they raised him, you know, yeah. then, or he just knew that those were his parents. Like, he's not going to doubt Himikawa's belief of who his parents are. Mm -hmm. But like you said, what is going to push him to open up this line of questioning again? Because we watch him shut it down. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, remember if... I had said any dialogue to Aqua about having the phone call because I know I what spurred her to call him was overhearing the conversation mm -hmm. of who our father was. Yeah, I don't think I think that was just for us. Yeah. So I, I'm like, okay, if I never told them that there was potential of them meeting, then that would be X'd out yeah. as a possible like reignition of realization. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure like Aqua's only step to the father being the issue is that in his mind, that is the only other person that could have known I's address. Yeah. Not because maybe he knew about this, this phone call or anything, but it, you know, that kind of, this whole thing makes me even more sad because of the fact that we're seeing how easy it is for Aqua to drop the revenge. Oh my god, I know. It's because and how, like, it's liberating for yeah. him. It's because he's able to happily do it mm -hmm. and smile and feel relaxed. It's because he's able to be like, I can now live and have my life. He's not like, oh my god, what do I do with myself? Like, he's not miserable or tortured over not knowing what to do with himself. He's like, oh. And yeah. it's because he's, it was so easy for him. I, like, I've been wondering this whole time. Okay, the moment that we get Aqua confronting not being able to have his revenge, how is that going to hit, like, how is this character going to handle it personality-wise and all? If that has been his driving force, the thing that's haunting him all of these years, mm -hmm. the reason that he's doing what he's doing is because of this. Yeah, I, I, it's like... So this is really messed up. It, It's just confirmation that it's been this constant grip around him and tension. And when it's not there, it is released. And it's, it's so painful because we know, or we assume at least, that it, the grip's coming back. And it's going to be harder to go to, to see it the second time, knowing what's on the other end of it. I feel like what they're... What they're painting is not necessarily for the grip to come back and the research side of things to come back uh, in terms of him trying to figure out who it might be. I almost feel like it's going to be a moment of what the fuck. Like he meets someone or he has a conversation with someone and he's instantly like, huh? You know, like some clue falls into his lap that is like See, this specific person I need to what what is going on here i don't know because like half of me is thinking that way and then when i try to take that train of thought 
uh, train of thought down its rails i'm like okay if that's if that's the narrative choice we're going with typically you'd use that as a sign of overcoming your attachment to the hunt right you'd see somebody it reignites something you'd go out of your way to do a dna test and then it would be embarrassing for yourself out of some reveal to make you realize that you have to let it go then you could reignite it with confirmation i'm trying to figure out if it's some if, if we go down that road or it's something more organic that aqua already has information of that's why i immediately went to trying to figure out if i had mentioned that phone call with you know aqua and ruby i uh, see i want to go earth shattering i want to go comes out of nowhere falls in his lap shock value yeah because of how what we've now done and shown with his mental state of almost pure bliss and being able to feel like he's free i feel like that freedom and feeling of like release the only way in my mind at the moment in terms of theorizing to bring it back in the story is ground shaking. I think that it would be through conversation, like confirmation of this not being the dad would happen through Aqua talking to his mom, Akane, or the director. I think that they would help him put it together at some point based off of their information they have of I. D the director and their oh, mom, like, did obviously- I ever know this man interact with him when was the last time i uh i interacting and then talking to the director or the director overhearing it or their mom is more feasible but akane is the only person who actually knows that i is aqua's mother and part of me and we know the research she's done not in detail but narratively why do you include that if not to have something later down the road be, like be utilized like from give it. him a sleuth type friend character that can also help figure things out yeah like why would you give him that like if i if, mean i guess like Akane's only real purpose could purely just be for no, no, no. The panic attack situation no and the support. here may if if three minutes of an episode this season was completely forgot like like x'd about maybe <laughs> if we don't get the line of Akane saying i will help you kill this person maybe okay through that i'm like the conversation of kana is able to do, to to easily see that something's different about aqua if kana is going to be able to do it akane is going to be able to do it mm -hmm. if akane is like something's different aqua doesn't have to hold that secret in with akane and it's like yeah i don't have to worry about this anymore that would leave room for a conversation with detail about why and th through that conversation maybe akane can like Oh, really? You know? Or uh, it'll be what I thought was going to happen in this episode where Katana realizes the difference in Aqua's kind of aura and she compliments it. She likes it. This is going to be good for you, she says. But what if Akane has a different response to a change within Aqua? What if she's like, I liked when we wanted to kill someone together. Yeah. And therefore, when Himikawa was like, bro... You're like our dad. You have to, you're a womanizer. And Aqua's like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. What are you talking about? And he's like, you gotta pick one. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the lover's suicide was genuine? I, I probably do. I'm, 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 the bad part of me is like, oh my God, another death related to the actual father coordination. But I am going to stop myself if uh, with that line of thinking. If I was theorizing that this was, in fact, the father, which I don't feel like it is, but if I was theorizing that this was, in fact, the real father, then why would he have, why would he have participated is a question that is posed by Himikawa. Like, Himikawa does, as having 20 years to try to understand, not 20 years, like 15 years, to try to understand what happened with his parents... Mm -hmm. he has had enough time to try to ask that question to himself why did he participate in this and he has yet to find an answer if you were theorizing that this was in fact the father then you might guess that it could have been because of i like what happened with i leading your other the other woman on the side to her death maybe accidentally or on purpose but then in regret you end up joining in this suicide with your other lover. Mm -hmm. 
I could I could start theorizing like that. I wonder if we're on to something narr- like uh, Aqua is given the information he has about the line about the father potentially being also in the industry in the same way that I was. You know, mm-hmm. like we're bringing up that. OK, Himikawa's mom was an actress for a morning show. Aqua brings up the idea of it of the father also being an entertainer rather being in behind the scenes does that mean that i potentially would have been in like a serialized show like or a net disc- discography or like an imdb page with somebody that is the actual father i mean we surely would have already researched yeah. these things to come up with names um another piece of evidence that doesn't lean toward i and her kids being the product of her having an affair with a married man is the idea of her on the phone in that booth talking, like, getting back together. That sounds more like you guys were dating. It doesn't sound like you're having an affair with someone, to use word. I mean, you could, I guess, if you were having an affair and the affair ended, be like, do you want to get back together? But it's the guy that she'd broken up with. I, the language has much more of almost, like, a young person relationship that is dating and not like I'm having a secret affair that's doubly secret because we're both famous. One thing that I want to point out about that conversation in the phone booth that I think deserves more attention by us is after I overhears it and Aqua's like just thinking about it makes my heart think you dummy you let a little thing like that get you down um she obviously had a virgin conception there was never any guy in the first place and i says "Uh uh-oh not good this is the line our kids are super smart i'm sure they'll understand our situation if it is somebody who is more of a directorial or off-camera person i wonder if the language would be i'm sure they'll understand my situation I wonder if phrasing it with, I'm sure they'll understand our situation, Mm -hmm. means that it's mutually beneficial to hide this thing, which would then... Lead to them both being... Entertainers. Yeah, I I think, but also I, I would say in slight argument that a person that is behind the scenes could be behind the scenes because they do not want attention. That's true. And they would not necessarily have planned maybe to have a relationship with a public figure and just happen to fall in love. And I I bring up this as well. I's type to me would not be a womanizer married man with a kid. I can't imagine I having an affair or dating a man that is described as such. I can imagine her having... A relationship with someone who was much more behind the scenes, not wanting so much attention on him, where she felt like she could have a quiet life and kind of sneak around in secret and just be calm and like secure. I agree with that. I'm it's for me in between that or somebody who has the answers that she was looking for. Like, remember her conversation about like love, love. Yeah. Like if somebody has also felt that same way, but overcome it or even felt that same way, that mm-hmm. could be alluring. I mean, it, it could be alluring. somewhat of a parallel situation with Akane and Aqua in terms of her attachment to Aqua. Mm. Like, seeing something in Aqua that is something that as has she has, feels has cured her, kept her safe, protected her, yeah. and it, it could be a similar parallel there. Man, going to Miyazaki is going to be fucking nuts. I have no clue who this character is why do we get them in this so this character's in the op and i have tried not that i had to try to like not theorize because like even if i had tried to theorize i would have had no guesses to who this is and what their significance is it's a creepy shot it's a they're like okay did you see her Mm -hmm. she's like clapping do you okay just getting it off the table, is she a real person? Or is she like a reaper or like a angel devil situation, a ghost? What where are we at? She's a real person, right? I'm gonna there I'm gonna go real person. Okay. Just for right now. That, the only 
why I'm like, is she a real? She's clapping. Right the body is seeing, coming back to life as Aqua, Aqua. And then we get her arms reaching through this, like, black... Could be a god. Like, the, who, like reincar- the, reincarnation. the purpose of the reincarnation. Right, like, reincarnation is in this god. story. And where is she standing when we see her? Almost at the bottom of a cliffside under a tree. You can almost imagine that that is probably around where his body is. Yeah. Which brings me to a very important question. If you were in Aqua's position going to Miyazaki and you know that your body has not been found and you are thought to be missing, you would don't you know. somehow... Well, he could have looked it up, right? He could have looked it up, but when Ruby called, that was years ago. His That's body could have been, been found between that. Then. Yeah. Well, if it hasn't, would you... Out of morbid curiosity, go looking for it? I don't know if you'd go looking for it because you want to see it or if you would want... Even if it's, you would just want it to be found and laid to rest is I, is I think where I'm going. Mm. Like, would you go out of your way in some capacity to locate where it is in order to have it be found and able to be buried? I don't know. I don't know. Does it even exist? Like, how does this reincarnation thing even exist? Did the body just disappear if this girl under a tree is like this? godly being she could also just be a human who could likes standing under trees by dead dresses. bodies yep okay i i cannot express to you how happy i was to get more attention on ruby this episode it's ruby's time i wrote that down which it makes sense that it would be if we start the series off you know, we're we're getting both of them in a good amount of time with the prologue, but it seems like it's leaning Aqua. And then it definitely seems like it's leaning Aqua because Aqua's goal is so strong. Like, how can you ignore a revenge plot and a revenge goal? It is going to, like, angry emotions take up so much more energy in the, like, space in the room, I feel like. And because he was, we he had that energy, it was taking up most of the plot room Mm -hmm. because it is so strong and now that he feels like maybe he can be free from that now it is ruby's time to have a good amount of focus at least in my opinion and that makes me incredibly happy because she definitely needs it yeah and her past is incredibly important and emotional and tragic her calling himura was fantastic or not calling sending a video message it was so in character for her because it's not just like oh yeah i feel like i want to do this i'm gonna send them this video just because i want to do it i truthfully believe that upon hearing the idea of more than burnout where this person's at ruby just has the innate knowledge that this would be the thing that could possibly turn the tides Giving a face to it. Right. And also, you're not calling. Like, you're sending a video that they can choose to open or not or pause if they want to, and which is incredibly respectful. I really like that characters in this universe, mainly because they're in the industry themselves and have been for a while, are able to explain to her the situation. This is not just probably a man that is ignoring this because he doesn't care about our group. Yeah. And the way that they're able to articulate the emotional place that a creator or a creative would be after years of creating. And then the idea that, like, he's already said all that he had to say. And then the simple, like, ignition of a spark by seeing who he's creating for was enough for him. And how creatives can be as simple as that. Yeah. Like, I studied art in college. That's what I did. And there would be time periods that I was like, I have nothing to say. And it would literally sometimes take the most minuscule thing to happen. And then I was back in the studio for hours. Yeah. You never know what it's going to be. Man. I love this show so much. (laughs) That like, I, there are so many different aspects that resonate with me. It's not like, okay. You give me a mystery, like, 
that I could potentially help figure out as a viewer in my own headcanon, I'm there. If you give me a crazy perspective looking inside of the world of something that I have minimal knowledge about, like the entertainment industry, I am there. If you give me lovable characters who have anxieties and depressions that I can relate to, I am there. Everything about, and the music is incredible. Everything about the show hits every note for me. Why would we wait to introduce Ruby and Himikawa? I obviously think there are answers that, to this question. That Narratively or from Aqua's point of view? Either, uh, both. I think from Aqua's point of view, it's just like, it just happened. Mm -hmm. No rush. Yeah. Narratively, you don't do it now because we're pivoting to Ruby. Good, too. That's also good. Uh, another point is it's kind of opening a can of worms. Like, hey, Ruby, this is what I've been doing and why I've been distant since, like, our childhood. It's because I'm DNA testing people and trying to find our dad. That's but now fair. I know our dad is dead. Like, it's a whole can of worms. Like, he'd be even telling Ruby who the father is. You wouldn't have to go they... that way, though, because Himikawa, you didn't go that way with Himikawa. Like, Himikawa's like, oh, did you already have a suspicion that we were siblings? Like, you could phrase it as... Yeah, I thought, like, something felt weird between me and Himikawa. Yeah, I guess you could, like, kind of lie to Ruby. It would be a I, tough I sell, like I get you. I feel like it would be hard to lie to Ruby about why you chose to DNA test this man. Watching Himikawa... Watching Himikawa react to the news of him having a blood sibling was so amazing to me. As somebody, as I've said it countless times, like, has learned that I've had... Full. blood siblings yeah full then like it, it, it you it's hard to like put into words the feeling that is like holy shit like I, you actually feel it even though that from my experience in life most connections like you choose who family are to some degree you get to pick based off of experiences you have with friends and how close you feel to somebody there is like a real tangible feeling when you find out that you are blood related to somebody mm -hmm. it's crazy and sometimes you can have a really strong sense about it and mm -hmm. that's totally real without actually having any evidence which to back is up. how aqua could phrase it to ruby potentially because it is realistic uh and he is a good actor so there there we go um and then the last thing i would want to talk about is we've already brought up the idea of aqua going back but this is the place Ruby died as well. Yeah. And it is Ruby's time to shine now, seemingly, in the narrative. So I feel like this is really interesting. Like, is, she, is there something she's going to... She knows this doctor is missing. She's going back here. She wants... She's hoping that with the B. Komachi coming back that he'll be watching her, that he will be watching over her from wherever he is. Two questions, positive or negative for Ruby? And then is this is this setting up a scene that they figure out who each other are? Ooh, ooh, positive or negative? I think positive. I think that from what we, the glimpse we got in this episode of the mental of Ruby in terms of thinking about her past she's in a good place she's in a place of being really grateful for the life that she's been given very excited for what she's working on and doing uh, i would say the negatives of it is that she definitely feels the pressure of almost like this time limit that she she needs to have success and make people proud as soon as possible both i and uh sensei aqua's past life um, I feel like my current guess would be this is a positive experience for her emotionally, maybe even therapeutically. With Aqua's plot in the last couple episodes, we really talk about how he's dropped out of therapy. Like he has not been working on himself with the help of an expert. Um, this could be really good for Ruby in that way to kind of walk around this place and really um, feel more in touch with the body that she's currently in. And where her life currently is. Question number two. What was the question number two again? 
is oh, this finding setting... out if yeah yeah mm. it's spe- like that's if, such a tough question if there's a if this character who's the white looking feminine the white girl under the tree if she ends up being some like spiritual like character i could one of course see it just being an aqua and her situation of exposition of what happened and why if not i could also see it being like and this is what happened and this is who th- is who and why maybe it's just aqua who figures out who ruby is uh, i don't know i don't know this it's, is probably just a human I'm- that's such a tough question though because it is one of the biggest this whole show a lot of it is about secrets um realistic secrets to the industry and being within the industry how you handle things and manipulate things if you're in an industry like this but then there's also secrets that are more um personal and less to do with the entertainment industry like Aqua and Ruby keeping these secrets from each other and not fully going into detail about their past. Like, they know that each other is reincarnated. Mm-hmm. They just don't know about anything about the past life of each other. And that's such a big thing to have on the table that I'm kind of like, I'm really curious to see the handling of it. And I almost am like, is it too soon in Ruby's time to shine to have them figure that out or is that good to move her forward if knowing it was, that it, that is him if it wasn't miyazaki i wouldn't have as much like worry about it maybe happening mm-hmm. or like thought that it might happen i mean this location is so significant so that significant. i feel like we have to start to theorize at least that something big is going to happen on an emotional level we or as viewers the not the characters level. yeah we yeah. as viewers what that's gonna be no clue who is this girl who is she who is she? i like sitting under trees or just standing there alone and, and clapping yeah in... oh no that was just in the intro. i know but just you like clapping it depends what i'm clapping for mischief it seemed like she yeah. might have been clapping for mischief yeah you good <laughs> yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe and hope to see you next time